So who is my neighbor and what do I do about it? <clears throat> Globalization more than economic integration also connects us one to another very much more significantly. We're no longer isolated. And the increased ability to communicate and to travel means all of these things come to the fore. Anthropologists see the increasing flow of culture, ideas, and people as central to the definition of globalization. Now, how many countries have you been in? How many countries did your parents get to is a great example of that question and the mobility that we have back and forth. Face to face with famine in Africa, child prostitution in Thailand, genocide in, in, in Darfur, and other issues that a generation or two ago would have been much more distant from who we are. Again, raising the question, well, who is my neighbor and what am I to do about it? <clears throat> Our neighbors are still the most vulnerable and powerless of society, but is society, you know, the little square mile you live in? Is it the country you are part of, or is it the global city, as it were? <clears throat> Scripture is very clear that those with wealth and power um, are to use it for others, not just for our own interests. And therefore, if we have resources, we're not to dominate others, but to serve others. And what does that look like? <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I often ponder the verse in Jeremiah 29 where we're to seek the welfare, pray for the welfare of the city. And we all know that the folks that were being addressed there were in a place that was not home and where they didn't want to be. And yet they were to pray for their city. How much more, as a result, should we as Christians pray for, quote, our city? And I wonder when I read that verse and think about globalization, is our city now the whole globe? Maybe. 